In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear friends. Today is the third Sunday of the Ordinary Time. And as we gather, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct your actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, may we abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The passage from Isaiah we are about to hear, proclaim contains in poetic language the promise of God's intervention in behalf of his people. This prophecy will find its fulfillment in Jesus Christ. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled in darkness, for there is no gloom where, but now, there was distress. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shown. You have brought them abundant joy in great rejoicing as they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate His temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, but is hearted and wait for the Lord. Today's passage reveals all the concern of the Apostle Paul for the unity of all the members of the Christian community in Corinth. He sees any division in the church as something that hinders the progress of the kingdom. All the communities of believers in any part of the world should be one, just as Christ is one. A 
are reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be, there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said to Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. And they were fishermen. And he said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed Jesus. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed Jesus. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. May dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Naranasan niyo po ba yung isang sitwasyon ng buhay niyo na kung saan ramdam na ramdam niyo yung kalungkutan, ramdam na ramdam niyo yung pagiging pagod na pagod na, tila bagang hopeless na ang buhay, yung tipong ayaw mo nang magpatuloy pa, and then suddenly, suddenly, you saw someone na biglang tumawag sa iyo. Tipong, in a very sudden moment, there is something very unexpected that came along the way. Yung tipong, it opened your life a new door. It is as if you have seen a great light in a very sudden moment. 
Naranasan niyo na po ba yung ganun? Well, let's say exactly what happened in today's story in our gospel. You can just imagine, it's, the gospel talks about the calling of the disciples. To be specific, the calling of Peter and his brother Andrew. The calling of James and his brother John. And if you might wonder, nagtataka po tayo, it was so sudden, biglaan. Napapasin niyo ba ba yung kwento? It was just so sudden. They were so preoccupied with fishing. And then suddenly, someone came into their midst, inviting them to follow him. And what is so interesting about this, it was so sudden that they left their nets immediately. Even their loved ones, they left them behind and decided outrightly to follow Jesus. As if they have seen a greater light. They have seen a greater hope. They have seen a new door. They have seen a new meaning in their life. And this is the point in today's gospel. Sa buhay, ang mahalaga po is meaning. Kaya maging maingat tayo. Ano nga bang nangingibabaw sa buhay natin ngayon? We might be so too preoccupied with a lot of things, material things, material possessions, fame, reputations. We want to be famous. Kasikatan. We might be too preoccupied about that. But take note, at the end of the day, as the Gospel is telling us today, what matters is the meaning. The meaning of your life. The meaning of what you are doing. And this is exactly what happened. Marahil ang buhay ng mga taong nakausap ni Kristo ay pagod na pagod na sa paulit-ulit na routine ng buhay nila. Walang halaga. Marahil sa buhay natin hindi rin po nalalayo nito. Yung tipong ano ba to paulit-ulit na lang. Pagising sa umaga, same routine. And at the end of the day, wala tayong nakikitang meaning. Kaya dito mo mag- makikita, pinapaalala sa atin ng Ibanghelyo, na ang meaning ng buhay ay makikita lamang sa Diyos. Kaya it's so interesting and so, so questionable. Why so sudden? Ganun na lang ba kadaling iwanan ang lahat? Perhaps because they were looking for meaning. Napagod na sa paulit-ulit ng buhay natin. At this time, they wanted something more meaningful in life. And truly, this is real. Meaning can only be found with God. Makikita ang halaga ng buhay sa Diyos. And I think this is the reason why we gather today. Napakainit ng panahon. Siksikan sa loob ng basilika. Why did you leave all things behind? Why did you decide suddenly to leave your place? Marahe sa ngayon, this is the best time to sleep. Andun lang, o di kaya, ito yung best time na magbibit you, okay? Magpapakasap ng buhay, magpapahinga. And then why suddenly we gathered in this basilika. It simply means one thing, my dear friends. We're simply looking for meaning. And truly, nakikita natin ang halaga ng Diyos. Nang buhay sa Diyos. Sa tulong ng ating mahal na ina. And this is a good reminder for all of us. What should prevail in our journey is meaning. Aanhin naman yung sabi ko nga po, minsan alam nyo, ito bilang isang pare, minsan nagkakaroon po ako ng pagkakataong bumisita sa mga bahay. Bumisita sa mga bahay, magpapabless ng bahay, minsan makita mo, 
minsan makita natin, ako personally, ako nangihinayang minsan. Manapakalaki ng bahay, nakamamahalid ang lahat. Of course, I don't take disregard the effort of the family, yung pinaghirapan. Minsan naramdam naramdam ko yung yung emotion ng yung may-ari. Father, ito yung bunga ng aming pinaghirapan. And I'm so happy for that. Yung meaning ng buhay, na kapag nakikita yung bahay, it's all about meanings. But sometimes, we have to be mindful as well. Minsan nakakalungkot sapagkat minsan ang bahay, walang tao. Nasaan ang halaga? Minsan pag tinatanong, nasaan ang kapamilya? Wala. Minsan, doon mo mararamdaman yung emosyon na naman. Nakakalungkot. Kaya minsan, sasabihin, sayang, kulang. Sapagat ang halaga ay minsan hindi nakikita. Kaya sa buhay din natin, life is short. Tumatakbo ang panahon, kita nyo naman, nasa huling linggo na tayo ng unang buwan ng taon. Napakabilis. And I just hope that we always long for meanings. We pray that we will always long for it. Na sana ang mas mangingi baba sa buhay natin is a meaning. Kaya kung sa tingin nyo may mga bagay na nagpapabala, naging balakid sa inyong sa pagbibigay ng halaga ng buhay nyo, do something. Kung minsan ang nagpapabigay bigat sa atin, nagpapabigat o naging balakid ng halaga sa buhay natin ay ito. Puso, damdamin, emosyon. Then do something. Kung ikaw ay may kaaway na sa tingin mo, hindi nagbibigay ng halaga sa buhay mo, then do something. Tanggalin mo yung kaaway mo. Kung may nagpapabigat dyan sa kalooban mo, dibdib mo, mga tampo sa iyong mga magulang, inggit, galit, kung ano-ano pa mga insecurities, and they're not giving you meanings in life, then do something. Do something. Listen to the words of Jesus. And definitely, if we are so mindful of the words of Jesus, the words of Jesus are so meaningful. Repent and believe in the gospel. If you need to do something, then do it now. If you need to forgive, then do it now. If you want to reconnect and to reconcile with people, then do it now. Huwag niyong hintayin na kayo'y naghihinalo na. And worse, huwag niyong hintayin na nawala na. It is more meaningful if you learn to forgive someone. It's more meaningful if you are able to reconnect once again. To reconcile once again of new beginnings. And this is something what happened in the life of the apostles. Why did they suddenly decide to follow Jesus? Because they want to live a meaningful life. And following and being faithful to the words of Jesus give them meaning in their daily undertakings. Ang halaga ng buhay. Kaya mga kapatid, huling tanong, ano ba ang mas nangingibabo sa buhay mo ngayon? Ano nga ba ang mas nangingibabo sa motivation mo ngayon? Ano ba ang mas nais mong makamit? Nakakalungkot yung nasayo nga ang lahat. Wala namang halaga. Di bali na yung kunti lang. Simpleng buhay lang. At is maroning kang ngumiti ng tunay. May mga taong nasa kanila na nga ang lahat. Diyos ko, ngiting aso naman. Minsan hindi nakaka, hindi nakaka tulog sa gabi. Di bali ng simpleng buhay. Minsan wala. Minsan mukhang nakakaawa. Sige lang. Basta naaayon sa kabutihan at tama. I'm telling you, you will have 
a meaningful life. You will be able to smile daily. And definitely, if you learn to live life peacefully with a smile, then you will have a beautiful face. Madalas ko pong sinasabi ito. Ang taong mapayapa, simple, magaan, ang ganda-ganda ng umiti. Sa ngiti pa lang ang ganda na. Kaya kung sakaling maganda na kayo, ang ganda nyo pang umiti, nako, magpasalamat kayo sa Diyos. Kasi binigyan na kayo ng maganda mukha, maganda pa ang ngiti. Wow! What a life! Napakaganda. Pero kung sakali po, ingat tayo, kung sa tingin nyo, medyo hindi ho kagandahan ang ating mukha, at masungit pa, nako automatic po yan ang mga taong masungit, mahaba ang baba. Lagi na kasi mangot, pangit pa. Kahit paulit-ulit mo pang baguhin ang kilay mo, pero kapag masungit ka, hindi mapayapa ang buhay mo, pangit ka pa rin. Kaya minsan, sabi ko nga po, mag-ingat-ingat, kung hindi nakagandahan ang mukha, masungit ka pa, nako, na sana ang hustisya ng Diyos. Kaya, mapayapa, magaan, meanings, ang yun ang mas mangingibabaw sa buhay. Kaya muli po mga kapatid, in this third Sunday, may be a part of our New Year's resolution sa mga Chinese dyan. It's New Year's Day today. Good start. Happy start. Beautiful spot start. Peaceful start. And meaningful beginnings. We all stand. And all together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of substantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Is virtually reunited with all the people of goodwill, let us address our petitions to the Lord for all the needs of all mankind and the people dear to our hearts. Our response will be, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Catholic Church, God's special family on earth, may she constantly be good news to all the nations of the world through her faithfulness to the teaching of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father, our Bishop, and all other spiritual leaders, may their constant effort to promote a civilization of life, love, and peace to be crowned with a lasting success. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For those involved in the biblical apostolate, may their effort to bring the Holy Scripture to all families and institutions find a positive response in all Filipinas. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are called to a special discipleship, may they respond promptly to the Lord's invitation and persevere in their vocation with generous faithfulness. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all Christian families, 
May their generous response to Jesus' invitation to a more radical discipleship make them heralds of good news in their own environments. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. In a special way, we offer to God all our needs and thanksgiving through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa. We continue to ask God for the gift of the Holy Spirit for our patience and perseverance. At the same time, we thank God for all the blessings, especially for the gift of life for those who are celebrating their birthdays and the blessings of years for those who are celebrating their anniversaries. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for continuing to call people to be your special disciples and promoters of your word in our country. May their efforts produce abundant fruit. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good in the good of all His holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty God. For so for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to your gifts of yours. That by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
listening. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Paalala po sa lahat sa inyong pagtanggap ng komunyon bago po humarap, pakibaba na po ang face mask. Kapag sinabi sa inyo, Body of Christ, tanggapin ng inyong dalawang kamay ang hostya at sumagot ng amen. At isubo na agad ang hostya. Huwag po ninyong isubo habang naglalakad at lalong huwag dalhin sa upuan ang hostya upang maiwasan po ang pagkahulog nito. Salamat po.
Please stand. Litany of gratitude after the COVID pandemic. Let us approach the Lord who makes all things new for all the blessings we received during the pandemic. And let us say together, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for reminding us of the fragility of life, shielding us when no one else dared to shelter us, and opening our minds to what is really essential. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For allowing us to connect with one another with faith and love, despite the isolation that sickness had imposed on us. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the heroic kindness of those who provided us with scientific, social, and spiritual help when doing so was both risky and life-threatening for them. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and depressed, lonely and impatient during the pandemic. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered a world of sickness, suffering and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory now and forever. Mary, help of Christians. Pray for us. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, may we always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagkikisa nito ating banal na misa. Muli po patuloy natin ipanalangin ang bawat isa sa atin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick sa may may sakit at sa ating mga kaibigan, kapamilya na nanangailangan po ng panalangin sa paggaling. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ngayon naman po, blessing para sa mga religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Mother, our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. May these rosaries, images, and candles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.